Good morning. This is the February 11th meeting of the Public Works Commission Reuse Subcommittee. 2016. It is 2016. And I'm calling the meeting to order. We're a subcommittee of the Public Works Commission. Uh, so let's start by asking if everyone has had a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Copies mm -hmm. here if somebody would like one. Uh, are there any blocking concerns or comments or edits that have not been sent to who took the minutes last time? I'm sorry? Sure. Oh, I took them. Are you here, John? Oh, okay. Obviously, big uh, presence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you get any edits, John, from people after the minutes were sent out? Get any edits? No. no. All right. Do I have a motion to pass the minutes as printed? Motion to print. Motion to uh, Accept. approve. Accept. Thank approve. you. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Uh, recenter report. Who is Alan, Mac, Diana? Who is that? This week. Oh, they didn't meet today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'll pick up. I mean, we've been out there a few times. Um, uh, Diana was out with a couple of people and looking at shelving and whatnot and you know, moved some stuff around. Um, um, I'm getting organized and uh, helping create some shelving on the west wall. Um, and there's some work on reorganizing the office. Uh, space to make it perhaps more flexible for us all. Um, I know it's been used. Um, not a whole lot, but actually, I'm going to measure it the weather. And, and, you know, so it's all still in our minds about stuff coming up. There's two places where the one's up will be uh, getting placed picked up again for the spring. Any other comments? Did it work out to get that book show? Probably. Not yet. Okay. We took it out of the house, but we haven't been able to get it into a van large enough yet. Okay. Oh, but we're working on it. That big. It is that big. Wow. We need the biggest Berkshire Natural van. So I put up a shelf on that wall where it will go, and I wasn't exactly sure where it goes, so the legs are adjustable so that we can move it. And so okay. that's not totally finalized, but mm -hmm. that's what I worked on last. I'm around Saturday morning. Saturday could work for me. Uh, I'll make sure that I have the big van um, back on Saturday. Okay. And do you have Lynn's contact information so we can... I don't. I mean, I, I have her email. Oh, well, just so the garage will be open or whatever and we can... They'll right. Know we're coming. Assuming she's back in town. Yeah. Why don't you get in touch with her and let me know what she says. Okay. I can help if you need help. I have a phone someplace. I'll forward to you. I have a couple more things to add, if, if I may. Um, first of all, Maria has been doing a bunch of research about a scale and spoke with the working group last Tuesday about the kinds of features one would want on, in a scale, and I think that we decided that we really didn't need something that would weigh more than 100 pounds, um, because we would probably estimate really heavy items based on either moving companies estimates or kind of general estimates about items. So, because we're not going to get like six people to put a big heavy XYZ onto a, a major scale. So she's looking at scales that are commercially available and I'm fairly certain that we can buy it with the grant money that we have. So um, that's been very helpful and I wanted to thank her for that. Excuse me, is that Enterprise Fund? Grant no. Money? No. 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 Where's that? No, that enterprise fund is, is, is our city money. money. Yeah. That's the, that's the city. Um, yeah, so this, this is money from the Sustainable Materials Recovery Program from the Department of Environmental Protection. The, I wanted to mention that the ramp room is the doors are finished. We now, so we, we've removed one door and then the other door was already completed, I think, last spring. So we should be in good shape to have the inspector out to make the final inspection so we can get the final thumbs up. The roof situation took a turn, so just temporarily. The fellow who had come out from Robert's Roofs 
uh, when we sent him information about prevailing wage, said that he didn't think that he would be able to help us after all. Prevailing wage for a lot of roofing companies is, is just really complicated and it, and it um, upsets the apple cart, so to speak, um, sometimes. So I did some calling around and uh, Bob Reckman actually recommended somebody to talk to who recommended somebody to speak with. So today after, uh, today afternoon, uh, today, this afternoon, David Vlad and I will be meeting Dave, Doug Luce from Luce Brothers Roofing out there. Uh, the only exception to prevailing wage is if it's a sole proprietorship and the proprietor can choose whether or not to pay him or herself prevailing wage. <laughs> and I guess um, Doug is, is, a, is considered a sole proprietor yeah. and he might be willing to do the work either um, the other thing that was discussed is if somebody can't do the work, if a sole proprietor feels like it's too big a job or, or doesn't, you know, whatever, we could perhaps have part of the roof done. So maybe, you know, half of the roof or whatever could be completed um, within a certain amount of time. So why, we're, why we're just going to be, be considered. Why would that be? You couldn't, you couldn't do the whole roof? What's the reason? Well, because if you can't hire people, if you're, if, if it's too complicated to pay your workers to help you with a big job, mm -hmm. and it's only one person who's a sole proprietor, doing a smaller job might be more attractive. So he'd have to do his own. He'd have to do. He'd have to do all the work himself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's one of those things that <coughs> it's it's a city regulation. It's a state law that is there to protect people from getting. Um, Forgetting what the word is when you take advantage of exploited. <laughs> exploited. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Exploited. Exploited. Thank you. That's a perfect word. Um, <laughs> so, it, but it, but in the, uh, but on the reverse, it does, it does get um, cumbersome sometimes. So this is one of those situations. But I wanted to give you that update. Anything else Anything about the else? recenter? Uh, <clears throat> I, it just occurred to me that we should be thinking about scheduling. I don't know, Susan, if you have a chance to talk to Deb um, about scheduling a meeting with the, uh, the gatekeepers um, right. <coughs> so right. we can talk about a range of issues. Right. Well, so um, thank you. That reminds me. I have tentatively booked Deb and Sue, and I'm going to be working on Tom as well, for a casual discussion about the green sticker situation at the Reese Center. There's been kind of banding about do we, you know, it's really um, cumbersome for somebody to come over at not having paid the fee, the disposal fee, and then we decide, no, we're going to have to have the disposal fee paid on this. It's a very kind of awkward situation, and so there have been various solutions kind of bandied about, one of which is that we just let the, the gatekeepers charge for that which they would normally charge for and then and then everything is and then and then whatever comes to the recenter comes to the recenter the challenge with that is that we don't want to discourage people from bringing stuff that is really highly um, desirable desirable and so we know we'll go and we know we'll go so so that so we need to just kind of bandy that up about a little bit and and that's going to be not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. What, what was the problem with having one of us, one of our gatekeepers, look at things? At, but the, at, the, at the gate. Well, it, 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 you end up sitting there a lot of the time doing nothing, A. Um, B, some of the gatekeepers don't like us peering over their shoulder, um, and we just kind of get in the way. I, <coughs> was it, were there other reasons? That well, sometimes there weren't enough volunteers to do that. Yeah. So we we need to look at anyone is welcome to join us. I think it's on the. It's the twenty third. It's the twenty third. So it would be at like eleven thirty twelve. Uh, Sue works until I think eleven thirty. So um, probably here in this room in this in this conference room, but depending on the size of the crowd, maybe we'll meet at the Oliver restaurant across the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you said twenty third from about eleven thirty. Yeah. Yep. Now, um, 
it would be good to have a meeting just in general. Once we kind of figure out some things, it would be good to have a meeting with the gatekeepers if possible. It's hard to get them all together, and so it would be best to probably do it uh, as a piggyback to a meeting that du that Deb will probably have sometime in the spring. Well, there are only four of them, right? No. Cheryl, Tom, well, There are only Sue. four that we deal with. Right. But yeah. But sometimes there's some other folks out there. There's a younger man that's yep. there sometimes. Yeah. 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 Right, he's the fourth guy. <coughs> Abby. Yeah. Did you say Abby? I did. Abby, Sue. I haven't seen Abby out there. I don't know. She's on there Wednesdays. Um, oh, Wednesdays, that's why, yeah. I was thinking about Wednesdays. Um. Okay, hey, anything else? All right, well, we can come back to it if there is. Okay. Uh, let's go to the 2016 event schedule. 2016 event schedule. We have this here, and let me look at the minutes from... Um, I wrote the dates here with some of the conflicting... So our goal is to schedule them and get people to take responsibility to be the coordinator. Okay. That's our goal for today. <coughs> yes. So we've got bulky rigid plastics and the pot collection, the yes, so plastic pots. Write right down, these are the ones that we, um, so last month we talked about the ones that we definitely will have and then there was some conversation about potential new ones and new ideas. And um, while, while, we want to capture the new ideas. There's also some discussion about the need to re reassess our mission because as we come up with new things to do, pop-up events, um, the recenter takes a substantial amount of our energy and time and so we, we it would be a good thing to kind of reassess what our mission is and where we should focus limited energy and that's something that um, would be good to do sometime soon we are an, I, we are a group with lots and lots of ideas and <coughs> limited resources so there's a risk of if we if we go in different directions and, and people work on different things without having an overarching understanding of what we're here for and what we all agree that we're here for um, can be kind of splintering and and can cause exhaustion. <laughs> so, so um, we will figure out a way to to do that, and maybe under uh, new business we can talk about that, sure. David. So we what we agreed to do is we April second is the opening of the Reeve Center. Uh, potentially yes. <laughs> Yes, that's what, we, that's what we talked about, yeah. Can't you well, I think that there was, there's been some conversation at the working group meetings that maybe, maybe we, you know, what is the rush? Um, what, what was, what was the, the conflict? I what think we just want to make sure we're ready, yeah. basically. Uh, we have, you know, various <coughs> projects we're working on, and I think we can be fairly optimistic that we will be, but... I think we don't want to put a lot of pressure on us in case something unexpected comes up, you know. Okay, so there's the, the rally, there's the pot exchange. That's May 7th. That's right, I have that there. There's the um, spelling bees, March 30th. Oh, March 30th. And that's that's just how many people, John? Do we need to well, that? Three would be good. Yeah. Three is ideal. We had two last year. And it's <coughs> composting. Yeah. And for the uh, yeah, so that's a very minor. It, you know, it takes very little. I mean, John, um, I shouldn't say very little work because it we doesn't take much. Stuff. I wasn't there. David did it last year. Uh huh. We need someone just to coordinate it with Coopers and have someone there with the signs and sure. And that's with the NEA. Yeah. And. Um, NEF. 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 And it would be good if uh, just to kind of leverage our relationship with them since we're doing them good um, to find out 
is do they have like a publicity person or somebody that that maybe they can help us advertise the recenter yeah. or or events you know through whatever means they have with their constituents. Mm -hmm. Just it's worth asking. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so the spelling bee, uh, the pot Amazon. exchange, mm -hmm. Oops, the recenter opening, on the NEF board, I think he stepped off. and then with oh. the hazardous waste day, that's that's pretty much what we had talked about for the spring, and then in the fall, we have another rally. Tag sale, <coughs> toy exchange, and then the possibility of the another reuse showcase, perhaps at Smith Vogue or some other location. And we talked about the possibility of um, maybe partnering with someone with that, whether it's the the Loop people or. Um, What's the place over in East Knack. Hampton? Knack. And that was it. Now we we other we had new ideas, which uh, we talked about repair of repair cafe, cold frame workshop, compost party. I don't remember what that was. It was a promotion of composting okay. methods. <coughs> So those are all uh, ideas we can consider. I don't know, um, you know, again, we need to be cognizant of our, the resources that are pulled into the, from the, to the recenter. So um, when we think about adding things, air cafes. So uh, the first question is, when is the best date for the rally in the spring? Clarification since I haven't been to a spring rally. What happened at the spring rally? Bulky rigid plastics. We collect styrofoam, bulky rigid plastics, uh, bicycles often, <coughs> and uh, pellet bags. That's okay. Shredding. And, and paper shredding. shredding. Right. And the main things are the styrofoam and bulky rigid plastics. And they're well attended in the past? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. Very well attended. Getting volunteers in the spring was hard because the recenter is open. Right. The fall was easier because the recenter had closed by then. Right. And how many volunteers do you think you need, John? I mean, do you think are optimal for something like that? More than two. Five? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you need, oh, you need no, eight traffic. more. Eight, eight, eight or ten. Eight to ten. Yeah. You need a couple traffic people. Yeah. We we had that many at the fall rally. We had some high school students. Yeah. Oh. At the yeah. high school, uh, the fall went really well. We had plenty of people. The spring you high school students in the spring? It's harder. Yeah. Uh, it's a tough time for them. They got yeah. So this is the things. this is the vacation week here for the schools, and um, I think given the stuff that we have in May, April would probably be a better time. Why not June? Why not June? Um, I think in the past we'd had pellet bags and people might not want to hang on to them for that long, but that's not necessarily a reason to not do it in June. We did if we do it how about how about April second and make the recenter opening April 9th? Oh, that is an idea. Cool. It's that's nice. That way you don't conflict with the you know, there's yeah. not a competition for the volunteers. It's nice Could if it's nice out though. Does mm. anyone have Because what? if you put when you put the bulky rigid stuff on the lawn uh -huh. People want to walk around sure. and it's cold right. out. Sure. Or snow. Sure. Or, or snow. snow. I have a hesitation to putting two events in a month, in fact. Uh -huh. Due to promotion and volunteers and uh -huh. all of it. Well, um, we also have spoken about the, how nice it is to have some pots to bring to the pot collection. Mm -hmm. So right. it's possible uh -huh. we could do the rally on the 30th. And then we the next week we could have the leftover pots go to the pot sale because is that what we did last year? I mean, yeah, we did that with yeah. the pots. Yeah. We just had them there. Smith kept them right. and had them for the next week. Right, mm -hmm. and e so that it's boom boom. But this actually is <coughs> how many people do you need two. here, John? Two. One or two. One or two. Yeah. So so this is a um, this is a pretty simple thing. It doesn't take a lot of. We don't even have to promote it that mm -hmm. much. Right, because you know? the SOS so, does it. So we could do the rally on the 30th and then have the pot here. Is that 
Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we and then the recenter opening is we can still negotiate. Yeah, the okay, recenter great. opening could be a not a huge event too. It could be just we open and we get ourselves together, but right. not have a big but not add to that. Yeah, we could have a soft opening and then and then do it you know, and then later on in April, you know, promote a lot a lot. It's with lots of different choices. So then we need um the ski sale is on the third. Hanukkah and Christmas are around the 24th, 25th. So it seems to me that the toy swap, uh, toy exchange change would be best on the 10th. Does that mm -hmm. make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Toy exchange for Hanukkah. Yep. And then we've got the um, fall rally, which uh, the fall rally tag sale, Peter. Mm. Um, when you say antique show, is that the Pine and Valley antique That's dealers? the one, yes, it's the one at Smith Folk that takes over the cafeteria, etc. So so that's the week of the antique show, October 15th. Um, when is, Columbus. is that when is Columbus, on? when is Columbus? Um, Columbus Day is the 10th. Mm -hmm. Columbus Day is the 10th of October. Oh. <coughs> One of the uh, reasons the fall rally was so, was so successful was we added the pumpkin composting. Yes, that was fabulous. And that had to happen uh, after. Um, that's a good point, Alan. Yep. Excellent point. You are absolutely right, Alan. Yeah. So November 5th. November 5th? Yeah. There you go. It gets iffier weather wise. Yeah. And you get the pumpkin thing. Yeah. yeah. There, I mean, it was a good promotional opportunity for the whole event. Full round? Yeah. Um, now, then there's the, so then we have, so this is the Columbus Day weekend. Um, this is the East Hampton Savings Bank shredding event is on October 1st. That was just a piece of information. This is also the, Jew the Jewish High Holy Days are um, October 1st through the 11th. Um, One of the uh, point of events to I went to on Columbus Day weekend last year, which was a busy weekend uh, for a lot of things, but there was a um, kind of a reuse showcase that was down off of Route 10 in East Hampton by Jack's um, yeah. Fish Place. Loop. Loop. And I Loop. was so impressed with what they had. I wasn't sure that it was worth our repeating a reuse show showcase of our own, uh -huh. and if we could, I don't know who sponsors that, but it would be nice to uh, publicize and encourage for them through us yeah, um, right. this event. If exactly. you want to see what people can do art-wise with some reuse materials, send them on down there. If you remember the head librarian from South Deerfield had gone, had, uh, if you remember a couple meetings back, they contacted us wanting to know more about a reuse showcase. She was so, so tickled about the reuse showcase and she wanted to do something similar in the spring of this year. Has she been in touch with you, Diana? No. I sent um, <coughs> contact information. So she was just really, really excited about, about it. So it's possible that, you know, just having the awareness building. I mean, the, the thing about Loop, is it Loop? Am I mm -hmm. calling it right? Yeah. Um, is that it's all stuff for sale. And so it's, it's a great opportunity, you know, which is not a bad thing. So it kind of blends Deb's art show and sale with the sh re, re showcase it a little bit. Is there a reason why we would want to encourage just a showing of the kinds of stuff that people can do? or? Or they might be open to having a table at their event for <laughs> things that were just other ideas of what people could do at home. It would certainly offload us if they were willing to, you know, I think they're looking for a partnership mm -hmm. or something. Collaborating is mm -hmm. a great idea. Yeah. It spreads out the community, it spreads out the advertising. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's terrific. Does anyone have a problem with that? It's a okay. win-win. Okay. And then that kind of offloads us from having the whole event. It'd be nice um, to have them.
try to find ways for them to get stuff, you know, to use for their, you know, for their business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So well, and so. So we can reduce our. I will give them a call to see if they would like us to, uh, to help promote and partner with them and maybe have a table, etc. Mm -hmm. And and maybe we can even get NAC in there. NAC too. actually is, they she sets up the table. Oh, does she have? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. So then we have the tag sale. If we do the fall rally on the 5th, toy exchange on the 10th, we've got the tag sale. Um, weather is always an issue. We decided, we talked last year that Columbus Day weekend is just a really, really busy weekend. There's a lot of stuff going on. Do we want to continue having it that weekend? Do we want to consider having it the weekend of the 1st of October? Um, and then there's the issue of the costume <coughs> swap. Is that something that we want to pursue or not? I, I personally think the costume swap is a great marketing opportunity, just like the pumpkin thing. Um, and it's just such a fun, wonderful concept. I've also been repeatedly really disappointed <laughs> with, with the number of people who actually bring stuff. Um, we, I mean, in the last two years, we've had flyers go out to all the school children in the whole city and it still has been lackluster. So I think whether it's that the costumes are so cheap, you know, you can buy them at Walmart for $8 and then they fall apart and you throw them, you know, what, for whatever reason, I don't know, but we're just not getting a lot. But that doesn't mean Roger. we need to let go. Well, last year we didn't have it and uh, we just put a couple boxes by the big enclosure there uh -huh. and people threw stuff in and kids came and picked stuff up. Uh -huh. So it was, a, very tiny uh, thing. So we could do the same thing, but we, we could actually just set up a couple of tables. Uh -huh. And it would be a no volunteer uh, <coughs> space that people would just bring their costumes and throw them in a box and other people would come and take them. Just make it a bigger space and advertise it. For, for which event, Roger? Is being for costume the uh, swap. Tag yeah, sale. during the tag sale. During the tag sale. So, um, question, um, not having been to the sponsored tag sale, mm -hmm. I wonder, again, with our limited resources, whether this is worth even doing, because there's so many competing tag sales. Um, does that have one? There's other cities that have, have one. one. Everybody else has a tag sale. There's a gazillion tag sales. So um, I have to just ask the question: Why do we? Why do we need to have our own tag sale? And again, not, I know you were very involved with it. Maybe there's really right. wonderful support for it. I don't know. Timing-wise. Um, that's sort of the end of the season, Columbus Day, <clears throat> the end of the season, so it's your last chance to get stuff out. The weather, when we did have it in November, the weather was already mm -hmm. you know, cold. So, um, so the question is, does this reuse committee body need to support a tag sale at all? Yes. And and you know if that was something that we could offload, is that something that we feel? I mean, it's it's a great it's a great benefit to the community. I don't know if the Gazette is going to be doing theirs again. They do it I in will the spring. call them. They are going to do it in the spring. Sure. Last year they did it in the fall. And somebody else did one almost the same uh -huh. Day weekend. Um, whether it was in mm -hmm. South Town, there was South something. Town. She does the whole town. Well, there was there was another one in the Hampton that was going on. A big one. Could we collaborate with the Gazette and, and encourage them to do it on Columbus Day weekend? And they, um, they, they actually charged kind of a lot. It was like 30 bucks a booth oh. you know, for a by 10 space or something. So it was sort of expensive. They weren't doing it just out of the goodness of their heart. <coughs> but um, so they so can certainly investigate. And I think yeah. picking, picking the date maybe is. Well, one thing to think about is why did we start doing this? Because there, you know, think about, think back to when you guys had your first tag sale, and what was it that was so exciting about about offering this? Well, I mean, in terms of our mission, get things out of the landfill. It's perfect. I mean, it's a we get a lot of people, and a lot of people come and get stuff, and people that would ordinarily either just toss or leave by the side of the road. I mean, it, I think it works. It, it is perfect, and that was the whole reason for it initially. Yeah. I mean, and at the time, were there other people doing this kind of thing? Yes, South Adley has always had their tag sale in Northampton. In 
The uh, Gazette wasn't doing it. No, because I don't think the Gazette was doing it a few years ago. <coughs> I don't think it but matters it last, last fall. We had a lot of people. And I would, stuff I would counter home. now that we have the recenter, and so it's kind of like a continuous tax all the way. Um, but it's different. It's, it's different. different. Yeah. yeah, it's different because people can actually sell stuff and make right. a little money. Well, on and what's nice is that it's so simple. Basement. You don't yeah. have, you know, you can just. You Doesn't just require a lot of volunteers. It takes very little of our time. I mean, Peter puts a lot of time into it, but. How many people, Peter, were professionals last in the fall? Considerably fewer. Considerably. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, the reason it got started the first time, I think there were 40, 50 participants. And you, when Khan was doing it, a lot of people you know, mm -hmm. participated. Um, m many things have dropped off uh, as far as participation, you mean by including antique shows and stuff. It's a nice service to people who have apartments, I think, you yeah. know, as far as, mm -hmm. you know, as then, that's the, the, the only key thing. is to have, a, as we now discovered, is to have a fallback date, <coughs> no, a rain date. Mm -hmm. that, that's the important part, because and if we fold it in with the uh, costume swap in a very simple form, it becomes another you know, incentive for parents to show up and get some right. stuff. So is the consensus of the group that we should go ahead and try to schedule one or not? Uh, I think if Peter is willing to spearhead it again, then absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't that much. You know, the, the advertising part is the key. In other words, getting pub you know, publicity, I should say. So the other, the other <coughs> unknown is: is the Gazette going to do one in the fall? And if so, what is their date? That. So, how about if if we look at the weekend of the first as as option as, as our first pick and and it, with a rain date of the eighth? Because it's not available. This isn't you know, this isn't available here. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Peter, I'd, I'd probably pick Columbus Day itself. Just I know this. But then the rain date will have to be the 22nd, and it's going to yeah. start getting cold. Well, not as cold as November quite, but. Mm -hmm. And it's also two weeks later the rain date. Ah, that makes a difference. Yes, that would make a difference. So it's going to be harder to when yeah, it's so your advertising. Rain date is okay. Okay, so um, if. If the Gazette says, yes, we're doing a tag sale and we're doing it October 8th, or we're doing it October 22nd, or we're doing it October 15th, what then? Well, we're not going to advertise it just this minute yet. So I know, but I'm, I'm saying would well, we... We'll find would that we, out pretty quick. I know, but if they say yes, we're, we're all together now and we can make, right. a, we can make a decision. If, if there is one that's going to happen in the month of October or late September, right. What do we do? What What do we think should happen? Well, I'm I'm willing to chat with the, the former editor. Well, why don't we go down that road when we get there? Yeah. Well, Peter's going to chat. I do need to yeah. get the the the, the yeah. schedule out in a press release about what what we're doing. A, but B, if we do entertain the notion of sending out a postcard. We need to start working on that and getting that out as well. So, so the question is, do we want to collaborate with the Gazette if they are having us uh, an event, the same yeah. event, on or do we just or yeah, or do we just not have one in the fall? Okay. Yeah. So what do we think about that? I would say September twenty fourth with a uh, rain date of the first. And That's not the question, though. The question is, if the Gazette says they're doing it at the same time, do we collaborate with them or do we not do it because they're taking it? Well, I think. I mean, a, is it a competition? No. So they may say, oh, okay, you're doing it then. We'll do it on it. You know, we'll separate it by at least a couple of weeks. And I don't think, do you think there's that much competition from the, from the uh, Gazette taxa for okay. vendors at ours? The, com the, the main competition is in September. There's, there's thousands of tags. Mm -hmm. but, sure. but, but it's also the concept of, is that if somebody's doing it in yeah. the fall, is it worth our time and energy to do the same thing two weeks before or later. How many tax sales can one community the and size of Northampton support? That's the question, but I'm not sure we have time to uh, the debate that today because we want to get into the fundraising discussion. But so the, yeah, so the question is, do we just go forward or not? I'd say put it on the schedule, put and if we have to cancel now. it, we cancel it. I agree. Don't okay. Worry. 
to do it. Okay, <coughs> so this is the tag sale and then rain day here. No, he said the 20. Yeah, no, no, that's, no, right. that's right. No, that's correct. We're good. Yep. All right. I will bow to okay. your sweeter knowledge. <laughs> Uh, John, yeah. Before you go on yeah. to the next event, we're yes. talking about uh, people, uh, leaders of each group. Yeah, coordinators. Yeah, coordinators. yeah, and if we and if we were canceling, we'll say, well, we're canceling because it's a nice one. All right. Do we have volunteers to uh, take responsibility for each of these events? Uh, to tag sale and no. forward and and with help. And um, toy th the toy thing. Wow, that's great. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Um, I'll take the two rallies. All right. Awesome. I'll do the uh, pot and plant and sale and pot thing. That has many that's possibilities easy. going forward. It does. <laughs> Maybe harder to coordinate it. <laughs> John, are you around for the spelling bee? No. Okay, let me check. Um, I'm around for, and I, I usually go and help out with this, another specific task there, putting banners up and down on the stage. So I would be there to assist on site, but I, I just okay. assume not do the Coopers. John, if you can do the pre work like you did last year, I'll be there that night. Okay. And, uh, and then can, you and I can work together there. We'll get. I could be there. Great. I think. Yeah, three volunteers is optimal. That's true. Um, I would love to do a little coordination with having things be compostable. When I was there one time, it was everything was wrapped in plastic, and I was frustrated. This was a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been working with Coopers okay. on okay, doing good. that. So. Great. Is this, is this the city event? Is that Are we just going to have a team so of spellers have there? People from each this one? is the, the uh, Northampton Education I, Fund. I mean, yeah. They have an annual in. spelling bee. Right, so okay. we're just going to have a team there. So I'll help with promoting so not, not in the bee, just to uh, uh, manage the compost thing. Right. Yeah. And we're not going to Um. All right, do we have all the events taken? Yep, I think so. All right, can we move on? We'll come back to the events next month. Yep. Fundraising discussion. Fundraising discussion. So we have talked about the possibility of having a silent auction, whether it's affiliated with the toy swap or something else. We talked about how we could put things aside that we get in from the recenter. Or we could have uh, a chair thing. Unfortunately, the chair th idea was stolen from us. Um, from the Ma Ma Museum of Contemporary Art at UMass, they, they gave chairs to a bunch of artists, and the artists had their way with them, and they're doing a silent auction. So we've lost that opportunity. But um, it's, it, it just keeps bubbling up and, and coming up. And, and the, there were people who were not comfortable with the idea of taking things for free and selling them. If we do that, we need to notify people or make it really obvious that their items could be sold to make raise money for the recenter. There was also some other discomfort that people ex expressed that you know this is supposed to be free for everybody and isn't that what what the recenter is about? So we wanted to talk about. Um, how we felt about those things. I think, Alan, you were one of the people that we talked well, about it in our work. Yeah, you know, I, I think the discussion needs to be couched in a certain way, and that is, does the reuse committee need money? Mm -hmm. If we do need money, how much money do we need? Mm -hmm. If we're raising $100 a year, that's one discussion. If we need to raise $50,000 in a year to mm -hmm. achieve our goals, mm -hmm. that's another discussion. And I think you can't have the fundraising discussion until you know what, what we need to raise money for. Right, that's a good point. And there was also an ethical thing that had come up. Not ethical, but kind of like a, mm. is this something that is right for our committee to do? A mission. So, and that's something that. Uh, Ralph? Um, there was going to be a report last night on um, the uh, uh, solid waste and, and uh, uh, Oh no, that was going to be composting, wasn't it? Anyway, yeah. we will soon have a report on 
the solid waste under price fund and what the status is for the budget for next year, mm -hmm. which is relevant to this because since there is no incoming uh, money for the um, solid waste under price fund, it's like will, and we, we did have a uh, flow through of what was left over from last year, but will we get more money next year? We don't know yet. And um, so uh, I think you might need to talk to Jim about that information before we talk about fundraising even because uh, they're sort of hand in hand. And can we do fundraising as a legitimate um, role of the committee? Mm -hmm. Th and those are two questions. Do we need to and can we? Right, right. Most of the expenses that we incur that can't be bought, can't, that can't be paid for with with grant funds or haven't been in the past is advertising expenses for our pop-up events, for the pop-up events. So um, that's something that because of the benefit to the entire community, Ned always felt that it was, you know, as long as we kept it to a minimum, that that was a cost of doing business for the solid waste enterprise. So, um, solid waste services for the city. So, we've reduced the number of events that we're holding. The tag sale has a substantial um, cost, but that is offset by our participant fee. The toy exchange has a significant cost. The Gazette gave us a, a special deal last year and ran an extra week for free. They, um, I asked about sponsorship, and that's what they do. They don't, they don't give it. They don't give you the initial advertising for free, but they'll give you additional advertising for free, and that's that's what they consider a sponsorship. So um, the toy exchange still does have an expense of maybe six hundred dollars, something like that. Um, so tag sale, the fall rallies. You know, if we c if if we can do a postcard, mm -hmm. I think that we can probably pay for it. Maybe um, this year because we now have two years worth of a, a, a certain part of the grant that that is accumulated. So we might have enough to do a mass mailing, but we wouldn't be able to ha do it every year, assuming that you know um, it, I can't guarantee that we'd be able to do it every year. But maybe we could do it this year. So that would um, help reduce the expense of having of individual uh, advertising because you guys say that it was such an amazing promotional thing that people had them on their refrigerators and you didn't have to do a lot of promotion. Su Susan, it seems to me that we should, I mean you have all these numbers in your head, that we should do a budget mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be to the penny but uses round numbers, and I'm happy to work on that with you, you know, actually do the budgeting if you just send me some information, uh, so that we can talk about real numbers, real numbers mm -hmm. because it's, it's just too abstract of a discussion otherwise. <laughs> so for today, I think we should restrict our discussion to, um, you know, philosophy and whether or not, you know, this is something that falls within the parameters of our expectations. Yes, Mac. Uh, well, I'm one of the people that I think uh, got behind the idea of having some fundraising uh, uh, in the past, and um, part of what I've seen it as is really like a petty cash fund, not so much for big big ticket items, you know, but maybe a few, you know, the, a few hundred dollars a year, or something like that. Um, and some of the purposes that came to mind were, for example, people out of the recenter sometimes out of their own pockets or are buying coffee or food or whatever and supplying that and that's really great but it would be nice if there was a little fund where that could happen so people didn't have to do it on their own um, another thought was um, conferences like there's this big conference in Boston coming up in the fall and Maybe somebody from this committee or several people would like to go, but it's going to cost a few hundred bucks or something like that to go, and maybe we could give them a, a partial or a full scholarship, you mm -hmm. know, with, depending on how much money, and thereby, you know, increase our awareness of what's going on in the rest of the world with reuse. Um, you know, I also think about um, 
possibly, you know, tipping fee stuff. You know, that hasn't really been an issue in the past, but if we needed to say to the, to the public works folks, you know, you're worried about how much we're putting in the dumpster, here's $100, we'll pay for a ton, <laughs> you know, yeah. or whatever, uh, that, that we would have the capacity to do that. Um, it, it really hasn't been an issue. But, and then there are sometimes particular material needs, like we're talking about buying a scale. You know, now we might be able to get that out of a grant, but if we weren't, this would be another <coughs> possible place that we could buy a scale for whatever they cost, 100 or $200, you know, that would be a really useful tool out at the recenter. So those are just some of the thoughts that I had about why it might be a good thing. Um, and, you know, I, I think the, the issue of should everything be free, I understand that, but th that's why we started last year. If we saw something that we thought might be sellable, we would say to the donor, you know, how would you feel? Would you be okay? This looks like it has some value. Would you be okay? if we sold that specifically to take care of our expenses because we have ongoing expenses. You know, there's, the whole thing is we have expenses. You know, the, the DBW has supported us pretty much. We don't know with the state of the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund, that seems a little shaky, you know. Uh, so it just seems another way to have a foundation for what we're doing where we're not necessarily depending upon the largesse of the DPW, that, in case that isn't there at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, up here. There's a question. Um, I believe the postcard costs fifteen hundred dollars. So. Four thousand? Yeah. Was quite a bit of it was a lot of money, which is why we have a dollars to print, but then oh, postage. Okay. Yeah, it was four or five thousand dollars. I have no okay. Oh. I have to remember. It's, it's, it's really it's expensive. Money. Yeah, that. It's, which is the reason we don't do it every year. There is another method which yeah. mm -hmm. is putting, well, of course, I never would get to Gazette, but you can put a flyer in there. There's 12,000 households. Gazette. Yeah. That's a okay. yeah. possibility. I don't think it would have the same reach. Alan? Um, first, I'd just like to support your comment that we have a working budget. Um, it would be, I think, really helpful for everybody to, to know what that should be, even if there's sort of estimated items. Um, I, I think. Part of what we're doing at the Reed Center really, when you step back from it, really should be about educating people in the community about reusing and recycling. Um, and that takes money to do the publicity for that and also to provide some educational tools. And um, so that should be included in our, in our budget. Um, and I, I appreciate the money part all the way around. Um, at the same time, and I don't understand the, the finances with the enterprise fund, and, but um, you know, to a certain extent, <coughs> as a taxpayer, I would like to see some of my taxes come back to support some of the services that, that this community is actually working on, and it's a justifiable claim. Okay. Um, and I don't know where that goes, but I, I think it's not un un unrational for the, the city as a whole to say that working on recycling and reuse is worth uh, the money that it needs to support the enterprise. Um, finally, al although I did raise the concern, I was one of the people who raised concerns about, you know, should this everything be for free and is it right to raise money uh, from what we're doing? I'm, I'm not, I just want to go work it again, I'm not opposed to it, you know, uh, but there's a limited amount of money we could get. Uh, if it's a few hundred dollars we can earn from selling s some stuff uh, or collecting donations, that's fine, and, and that should go into our, our, our budget as to uh, what we're going to be spending our money for, what, whether we have a donor fund or a, or a publicity fund, we, we should still have a budget for that. I have quite finished what I was going to say, which was <coughs> on the other end of things, I see long term that we might want to buy a chipper, by other equipment which the DPW isn't going to necessarily put out money for. Um, and I just like the idea of being able to move in those directions mm -hmm. long term when we see that this opportunities rather than having to be begging for money from you know, right. whoever's in charge. Susan? I just wanted to explain, and, and maybe Ro or David would be a better person to do this, but <coughs> the 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 comment um, the concern that or the comment that you made about 
that the taxpayer money would be nice to see some supporting um, this this enterprise. The the and I, I mean you might already know this, but the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund it's a it's a almost an independent funding source that uh, when you have an enterprise fund, it means it's self-supporting. It's supposed to be fully self-supporting. And most communities have them for water and sewer, and they have them for solid waste. And usually the solid waste funding source came from a landfill. So you would have income from the landfill, profit from the landfill going into this fund, which would then pay for all the services related to solid waste. And Amherst had this similar situation. So the problem is once the landfill closes, you now have this sometimes uh, half million dollar, multi-million, you know, not multi, but it's usually in you know, a half million to a million dollar enterprise where you're used to having these funds come in and being able to operate this, this system, now those funds aren't coming in. So you need to look at what services you might have to reduce, or the, the other option is finding a way to fold all of those services into the municipal budget, which is not a popular concept with finance people at all, because we're, you're, you're then looking at a way, I mean, what is the solid waste enterprise Funds um, operate annual operating. What is it? It's less than a million, or no? Oh yeah, it's less than a million. yeah, like maybe half a million. I was thinking two hundred thousand. Maybe well, in the middle hundreds of uh -huh. thousand, four or five, okay. maybe mm -hmm. four. Okay, so four hundred thousand, say. So so you have to find a way to get that money out of the tax base. So um, I just wanted to explain that so everyone had a sense of it's. Um, the support that the city is giving at this point is some financial, some employee through my position and Deb's position, um, and to to get more support um, means either finding another municipal arm or or um, department that would support it in their budget um, or making more money in the solid waste enterprise fund. Is that, you know, did I accurately represent that? You're looking at me with a puzzled look. Yeah. <laughs> so, so a lot of, most people in the community don't understand. They think that that this whole deep, this, this whole solid waste enterprise piece, the so, solid waste services, they think all solid waste services are being paid for through their taxes. For years and years and years in Northampton, their taxes have not supported this. And um, it's just, it, it, it's, a, it's kind of an important educational piece to get out there. Thank you, I didn't actually yeah. appreciate that. And, and one more thing to add on to that is that the enterprise fund is no, not only is it no longer bringing in money, there's still outgoing money because we have responsibilities to the state DEP to do landfill um, monitoring, monitoring and capping, and, capping and, and testing. And, and this was budgeted for when we announced that we were going to close a landfill. That's, that's always been, I know Ned always yes. argued, yes, we have the funds right. secured for right, right. capping properly and right. closing right. the landfill. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying, there, but there's no more money coming in, mm -hmm. but we have money. That's why there is money in the fund. Yeah. Landfills are pretty much considered cash cows, but people say that they're, it's a short-term mm -hmm. profit center and a long-term liability. So, so there's money in the fund, but it's earmarked for closing and capping. Right. Yes, there's, and so there's it's not no really money new available. money coming in. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so when people buy these tags on the car, like I do, that money goes into the enterprise fund? Though? That's right. Yeah. That's so there is and some right, money there is, Yeah, there is some money coming in. And, and what's but happened right now, in Amherst... Not, not covering the cost. Right. What happened? What yeah. what happened in Amherst is that it got to the point where it there was so there was there wasn't enough money to cover the costs, and so at one point they were looking at closing closing the transfer station, um, and that's one of the reasons why I left is because by reducing my job my my position, the solid waste enterprise fund was more solvent and, and the, the transfer station was less at risk. So that's the I mean if you want to look at what can happen to a community, 
you know, Amherst is an easy one. Now there are other communities where the solid waste services are built into the tax base. So you go to West Springfield, you go to other places, and they, um, uh, South Hadley, you know, I think, there's, or are they on the Enterprise Fund? I don't know. Fund? Through the um, health anyway. department, right? Like the Board of Health used to be overseeing solid waste, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. well, I, I know that South Hadley pays, um, they have a, a citywide pickup of trash, but I don't know whether it's Solid Waste Enterprise Fund that pays for it or, or the actual tax. Um, Susan, let me interrupt you. Uh, we're past 930. Do okay. people want to stay and continue this conversation? I just want to add one more thing. Actually, two more things. Uh, but first, it looks like it doesn't look like we're going to be able to re rely on the city for any money at this point. Things seem to be in such flux with the, all the different things that we're going to have to have. make sure we have our own. I, I, I don't know. I, I would say that that's a risk, but I, I really, we can't say for certain right. at this point. Yeah, because there's money left over from last year that we still have. Um, I'm thinking $7,000, six or $7,000. You mean this committee? Yes. For, the, for, ex for building expenses. And, okay. and for the, well, that's why we need a budget on the one mm -hmm. hand. For the reuse center. Right. Uh -huh. But, you know, I think we need to be pretty much self-sufficient otherwise. Well, we will never be self-sufficient. Or but as, meaning, to the meaning extent we can be. all of our money still has to go through DPW. Sure. So if we have any income, it's still going to come in under their auspices. Mm -hmm. But if we can we show can. a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. I think that would be great. Yep. But Peter, <coughs> as discussing with David, there could be a third party. There could be a green Northampton that facilitates some of what we want to do but doesn't have to go through the DPW gives us much more flexibility and a little bit more independence <coughs> in a way, yet still involving the DPW for what they're good that's at. That's a different organization, and that's not an impossible, but it won't be affiliated with the DPW. No, no, it's just what I'm saying. You but know, I'm saying it isn't. I mean, that it would have to be a different organization. Like Green Northampton? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that I think is really worth looking into, and it's pretty much... Uh, <coughs> not functioning doing anything else, but I think that could be our fundraising source. Um, so I would suggest that we table this or continue this discussion in our March meeting. It's been a great beginning. Susan, maybe you and I can put a, I don't know if you remember, but I put a budget together when we talked about the Reuse Center yeah. mm -hmm, yeah. a couple of years ago. Right. So there is one that right. exists, and right. I'm going to revisit it and right. see yeah. how close we were. Um, okay. So uh yes any comments before yeah i just wanted to say we've been talking about we've been talking about the repair cafe for a while and it seems to me that the uh recenter has been taking up a lot of our time as well as our busy schedule so i've been trying to uh, downsize it so i've come up with a couple of ideas that i'd like to put on the, the agenda for next time okay great great uh matt i just wanted to put in one other comment about a thought i had about petty cash and that was one of the things we've talked about is setting up collection areas for things like batteries that, you know, if you get a whole bunch of them and you can ship them off to somebody that will reprocess them or CDs, I think, is, is another one. And that would be another thing we could finance if we had... Yeah, the DPW anyone. collects all batteries except for alkaline batteries. So we already collect batteries. All batteries for, except right. for alkaline? Yeah. Alkaline go in the garbage, right? Yeah, alkaline can go in the garbage. Yeah. But but we did we have spoken about doing the green disc, yeah. and that's something yeah. that doesn't cost a whole lot, so we can yeah. certainly do With that. A relative yeah. I don't small like putting my alkaline in the garbage. Either. I Hate send it. them. Yeah. I, I collect them and send them away. They used really? to contain lead prior to, to the 1980s. Oh. They oh. contained lead, which was why they were originally collected. And some states continue to collect them. California, I think, does. But in the state of Massachusetts, we don't. I'm sure there's other chemicals in there that would be and best metals. left out of the yeah. metals, yeah. 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 Well, that's, why didn't they go in the metals? I, I never understood that. Why didn't you put alkaline into the metals recycling? Rather than, it's mostly metal. Yeah, I think I think there's some I, reactivity issues and yeah. sparks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, move to adjourn? Uh, we have um, new business. Okay. Um, I just had a couple things. Uh, you guys heard about the plastic bag article. Peter also drafted a, a letter, potential letter to the mayor in our, in our uh, Tuesday working group meeting, 
it came out that it would it might be helpful for this committee to send a letter to the mayor um, asking for um, continued support slash enthusiasm of reuse in the selection of the new director of public works. So um, Peter drafted this last night and I, I guess um, since we're really short on time, one, a, a quick question would be what do you all think is important to communicate to the mayor and, and then to figure out how we can how we can get the group to approve the letter without having a special meeting so that we can get the letter to the mayor quickly. So rather than spending time looking at this, and I thank you, Peter, for doing it, but, but in the interest of time, what is the most important thing to communicate to the mayor? Peter and I will work on making that happen, get it out to you, and we'll find a way to, to get everyone's okay with this. Can I just refine that a little bit? That my idea is not to try and put, lay this all out in an email, but to actually have an appointment with the mayor. Some of us will go and visit with him, is my preference. Well, that wasn't what we decided what we talked about so so maybe the group needs to decide well, you know road your suggestion was that we get a letter to the mayor I, I thought the letter was to be in considering hiring of a new right. director right which is in there yeah right so so the question is does the group want to send a letter suggesting or, or encouraging the mayor to to hold us in the light <laughs> <laughs> in the selection of a new director, um, or do we want to meet with the mayor? Those are two different things. Or both. Or both. Well, I would say the most important thing is to remind them what our mission is, mm -hmm. and that what we've been doing for so many years, and it was with support of the city, and that uh, we we're doing all these wonderful events for the city that are well attended. We want a uh, you know a director who's you know supportive. supportive yeah. yeah. Basically. I think that's easier to do in person. I mean, you know, to, we want some people, but some people process better. If they can hey, hey, Peter, it doesn't have to be either or. I yeah. think yeah. I think the idea of both is strong. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Well, I put as much in this as would at least give him the flavor, and that would be up to him to schedule it. So, so um, Roger suggested that the letter talk about the things that we've done. For the community and that we want to make sure that the director is supporting and we would ask for a meeting for what purpose to flesh out first of all to find out what he has in mind for the future of the dpw operations etc and our part in that but also to give him an idea of where we'd like to go how we'd like to expand to other but things. that that is it yeah, that's really the reason for it so to give him a sense of the vision. Do yeah. we have, but do we have a vision to share short of the reuse center and and our pop up events with maybe going into the repair? We realms? we can put that on the next agenda Let's to talk see. about what are our long range goals. But if, okay, so so the letter needs to go out soon because right. he's now making he's in yep. the process of making the decision now. Mm -hmm. So we would just request. A, a meeting with him to talk about our future. Okay. Yeah, go into detail. He's not going to watch all these tapes. Right. So. Right. We can. Uh, Doesn't help anyway. You can't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so because they'll have questions. So then the next question is, how do we get this letter approved by the committee, given that we're not all going to be here? I can send it to you. So there are some issues with with open meeting law. I can send you all a copy. We can't deliberate about it online, but you guys can send your individual comments to me and I can send out a new copy to everybody. But we would need to, I think, probably have a vote to, uh, to that we want to have a letter and that the process by which it will be vetted by the, by the, by the group. Ro, do you have something to add? Can we empower you to write the letter with any input that people give you between now and whenever you send it? I mean, can we do that? If you're willing to sign your name to it, absolutely. And I mean, I will send it out to you as, you know, to. And, and unless there's like any major concern, then we just send okay. it, right? Right. Okay. right. Okay. I, I think that it should be a very specific focus, which is they are now in the process of hiring a new person and that the new director be supportive of the reuse center. 
Yeah, short. Strongest letter is the one that's direct. Strongest reuse committee, not just the recent. Strongest letter is the one that's direct. Reuse committee, not just the recent. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of our efforts. Yeah. Our efforts, yeah. yeah. Of our I mission. think we do more yeah. than the re re right. So <coughs> yes, yes, okay. I agree with that. But so I'm just saying that the the timeliness is and and the critical timeliness is they will start interviews and be making a decision, and we want people to be as uh, uh, supportive as Ned was. Right. Sure. Yeah. Or in somebody said or more. <laughs> you can always wish for it, right? And politically, we, we you know, therefore we've got a green so city hope award. that the successor, whom no doubt you're already looking for, will actually be as supportive, if not more. So. Right. So, can I have a motion that that, that um, we send you comments. that you send me that that you're in, you're entrusting me to work with Peter, develop a draft, send it out to you guys, and then and you're and that. We will have the final, I will have the final. So the motion on the floor by John is to empower Susan to take our comments, write this letter, and send it off uh, with our blessing. And the comments should be into Susan by? Uh, this week. That's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. Friday. It's, it's a it concise letter. No, I mean, it's, no, no. Yeah, it needs to be written Friday. Um, it needs to be written and then sent out to people. I mean, it needs to be, you know, yeah. edited. A little right. bit. We need to have our comments to you by tomorrow. By tomorrow. And comments about what? If about this letter. If we have any changes okay. to this letter. I, have, I, have a, I have changes that I would like to make okay. to this letter. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. by what, tomorrow. Does it make sense to send it out to you first before yeah, you spend yeah. time? Yeah, make your changes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then give us the weekend to respond. Okay. Or, All right. We'll have everything okay. to you by Monday. But we can send comments to you by tomorrow for the initial draft. Sure. Yes. Sure. If you have concerns and yeah. things that you want mm -hmm. included, absolutely. Okay. Proactive comments. The goal is any any timeline for the uh, mayor uh, be hiring. All, all all in favor of this proposal? Aye. 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 All right. Good. Uh, Roger. I just wondering what the timeline was for hiring the new director. It's secret. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's secret, right? That's what was announced last night. All right. No. It's all secret. Right. So it could Roughly, be Monday. A month. Next, I'm telling you what we Soon? know. Oh, next next meeting. meeting is March 10th. Yes. And um, do we want to look at April? It's been nice to have a, the dates yeah. in advance. Do we want to look at the dates for April? Maybe we leave the opening of the recenter. Is it the second or um, is it the ninth? We're, second, we're looking at the second, second potentially. Right. And if there are issues, we can push that back. I think that's what we decided, right? Yeah, a little flexibility yeah. at this point. We have it for the 7th. April 7th? Yeah, I think we already scheduled it. The first Thursday? No, that's the first Thursday. It would be the 14th. That's what we have it on. That's what we have it on. Oh, did we have it oh. on the 7th? That's what yeah. I have. Can we do it? Is there... Um, Works for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 7th April. I Maybe will be the here, April vacation okay. was the next Mm. Okay. No, April vacation the is the 18th through the 22nd. Oh, I, I didn't have it in my calendar, but it's fine with me. Okay. You had it in yours, right? I, I had it in mine. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. I need a motion to adjourn. Again. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Peter. Yeah.